مس بيل جيرترود البريتش كونسلر عن بستر ابن عبدك The vigilant outlaw a relationship of gratitude and respect for all life. In 1918, Gertrude, the woman who participated in the coronation of the first king of Iraq, was on the train from Kirkuk to Baghdad. She didn't expect her train to be attacked and the British force protecting her to be defeated. Suddenly, she found herself trapped at the mercy of outlaws and rebels against her occupying army. Since the beginning of the British occupation to Iraq, Ibn Abdaka has revolted against the occupation and in 1918, he carried out an attack against the train coming from Kirkuk towards Baghdad al station Shahraban Muqdadiyah while directing an armed group. He was able to neutralize the special force in charge of protecting the train and captured Miss Bell. So Gertrude, with all her great political weight, found herself a prisoner and at the mercy of the leader of the rebel force. And she asked him to give her freedom. And how surprised she was when Ibn Abdak, who was prosecuted by the authorities and outside the law, drove her to Baghdad while protecting her until she arrived at her destination with safety and security. Ibn Abdaka didn't know that Miss Bill was very touched by his combat experience, by his courage in train control, but above all by his indulgence and honor to lead her to Baghdad with respect. He didn't know that she would keep this gratitude through her life. We will see that when he was arrested after about two years, Gertrude took steps in the government to reduce his sentence. Who is Ibn Abdak? According to historians, including Ali Wardi and Salman Faidi, Ibrahim Ibn Abdak was the most famous vigilant of Iraqi society during the period between the end of the Turkish era and the founding of the Iraqi government. He was been a vigilant since Turkish times after killing a man in Bab Sheikh, a district of Baghdad, to avenge the murder of his brother. And then he hid in the orchards of Diala, declaring his disobedience against the government by gathering around him a band of resistance fighters. So he started his operations, cut the street and fight the Turkish gendarmes. The Turkish government couldn't stop him, so it put a financial reward to those who bring him back alive or dead. He was honest and didn't attack the weak, the poor, nor women. It was among the reasons that made people admire him and help him in his efforts to get rid of the government. Low sweet. Ibn Abdak continued to disobey the government during the time of the English occupation, and the British couldn't stop him either, like the Turks before them. When the revolution took place in Diala, Ibn Abdak actively participated in it. He killed more British soldiers than Turkish. This man had a similar position with Miss Zitun Buchanan. He also saved and protected her and took her to a safe place. She describes him in her book In the Hands of the Arabs as a nobleman. Also, her husband, the British government officer who worked on an irrigation project in Shahraban, had died in these events. After long prosecutions and great efforts, the English succeeded in arresting Ibn Abdak in al Mahawil south of Baghdad in 1921. He was brought before the court and sentenced to death by hanging. As soon as Miss Bell heard the news, she made her intervention and recommendation in the government, along with calls of the ministers and religious figures. After this, King Faisal I ordered to commute the death penalty in 15-year prison with forced labor of which he spent 12 years. Upon his release, the government sympathized with him and appointed him observer of the archaeology of Babylon in 1933. He was then appointed 
1942, observer of antiquities in the city of Hell, Babylon. In 1954, someone shot him because of tribal revenge. It should be noted that Miss Bell, who held, among other positions, the director of the Iraqi Museum, died in 1926. This ends the story of Ibn Abdik, but his biography remains in the books. To talk about long pages of admiration from a person who considered him as a bandit and outlaw. It also reminds us that gratitude remains in the soul and in the mind, even between enemies. Thank you.